Well, Slade, another week, more news, huh? <laughs> That's right. Some uh, depressing news as always, because for God knows whatever reason, the amount of layoffs we're seeing this year is already half of what it was last year, and we're only one month into it. Yeah, good, good God almighty. This is Byron, and that's Slade. Well, this is Slade. Yeah, welcome to Who the Hell Asked. Uh, and of course, we're, there's some stones we're going to leave unturned, but the stone we're always turned into is l the layoff stone. <laughs> so today... And let's start with the uh, largest company to uh, do the biggest amount of layoffs so far this year. Microsoft lays yep. off 1,900 gaming employees across Bethesda and Active Blizzard. And Xbox itself. Yeah, it's that's a lot. That's a lot, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and a message sent to staff obtained by IGN. Uh, Phil Spencer said Microsoft would provide full support uh, to those who are impacted during the transition, including severance benefits informed by local employment laws. Microsoft is usually pretty good with that. So, good for the employees that they'll at least be getting something, uh, even though, like, <laughs> it still sucks that this is yeah. happening. But uh, uh, according to the exec, uh, the decision has been made after Microsoft and Activision Blizzard's leadership team set priorities, identified areas of overlap, and ensured that we're all aligned on the best opportunity for growth. But uh, Mike Yabara, uh, has left. Uh, he, I don't believe he was one of the layoffs, but he might have been. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, Mike Yabara, Blizzard president, confirmed that he'd be leaving alongside Alan Adham. Blizzard's chief design officer is leaving the company. Uh, I would say those are probably the two biggest people to leave Blizzard. The dude who was the president of it and the dude who was, like, in charge of, like, designing the games or how yeah. the game designs would go pretty huge to say the least yeah like it's it's crazy it's crazy stuff apparently i am seeing reports of uh the by jez corden of uh microsoft laying off the entire internal customer support team for abk games save for a few and potential uh, shifts in departments with Microsoft involving physical retail games. Whoo, shit. We got a lot to pack, Slade, don't we? <laughs> a lot to unpack. Oh, yeah. We have a lot to unpack. Uh, um, Microsoft's not the only company that had a large number of layoffs, obviously, like we alluded to at the beginning. Yep. Over 5,000 jobs have already been lost so far this year, which is almost half of the total from last year. Yep, Jesus um, Christ. Second largest number of layoffs happened this month was from Riot Games, and yep. they lost, laid off 530 people. Yes, and I want to read a couple of, of, of things uh, from this. Uh, rioters, which first off, <laughs> odd choice for a name but whatever <laughs> uh sharing the decision we hoped we never have to make it riot ah no you, bullshit on that <laughs> uh we're changing some of the bets we made shifting how we work uh eliminating slade mentioned 530 roles about 11 percent of the workforce uh as CEO, I'm accountable for the changes we're making and where we're heading in the future. You say that, but you're not going to take a pay cut to save some employees? Oh, I don't have to... Oh, I can't afford my fourth yacht. <laughs> or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to find the quote, but it was like... I believe they mentioned something about, oh, we're not... We're not doing this to appease shareholders. And it's like, bull fucking shit, brother. Bull. Yeah, so uh, we could actually go into a little bit of uh, oh, discussion on that. I found the exact so, quote. I found the exact quote. Let me read it out real quick. We're not doing this to appease shareholders or to hit some quarterly earnings numbers. We've made this decision because it's a necessity. It's about, it's what we need to do in order to maintain a long-term focus for players. <laughs> go on, Slade. Go on from yeah, here. Yeah, so... This is all bullshit yes. that a lot of these companies are putting out that, oh, we're doing it for the players. We have to do it because we won't survive as a company otherwise. At least Microsoft uh, was a little bit more honest. Yeah. Um, Riot's tried to play to like our hearts here because mm. uh, 
when you look at like their total revenue and whatnot, yes, they have lost some of their net profit margins. Yes. But they are still profiting. Yeah. So like there's absolutely no reason outside of, well, our shareholders want us to make bigger profit. Yes. To do this. Otherwise they wouldn't do this. So it's just absolutely Yeah, strange. and like, oh the line about that shouldn't have even fucking been in there, the line about shareholders and blah blah well, blah. Well, it's because they know that that's what people are talking about. So they're trying to take some of like Yeah. The backlash off of them, but like that's not true. <laughs> yeah. So uh but in other news, uh in regards to the riot layoffs, uh Legends of Rutan uh blah blah blah. Legends of Runeterra is basically just gonna be on like maintenance mode and uh Riot Forge uh will be sunsetting after the release of uh Bandle Tale. So So that's yes. the Riot situation. But then of course we have Microsoft who uh, of course, these layoffs, some of them are redundancy layoffs, which was always going to happen in some way, shape, or form after the acquisition, which, as much as it sucks to say, sort of makes sense. Like, I hate saying that, but we've seen it happen slay time and time again with these, like, big acquisitions. They're, it's always guaranteed to be some sort of layoffs. I didn't expect yeah, absolutely. I didn't expect this many and for Xbox just itself to also be affected. Good god. Yeah. And as um Good Vibes Gaming kind of pointed out in their video, mm -hmm. the layoffs are happening purely with western companies. You're not seeing it happen in Japanese and eastern studios for the most part because there's laws that prevent companies from laying off employees. Yeah. So, like, you know at this point, it's just purely for profit margins and CEO fucking bonus pay and no other reason. Yeah. Like, let's not ever pretend otherwise. But, uh, let's talk about what's been a very fun but controversial story that has happened this week. Because, uh, I have been following this with great interest, as I'm sure almost everybody who has ever played Pokemon has. And that is the release of Power World and all the subsequent controversies that surrounded this game. Yes, so, release. uh, Slade, explain to people who, who somehow don't know, what, what is Pal World, for those well, who don't for know. for those who have been living under a rock somehow, um, <laughs> Pal World is basically a open world survival game in which you can catch and, uh, train and use pals. Yeah, for battles, labor, food, breeding, you name it. Label. It's pretty immoral. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, but it's also fun as hell. Like, think Ark Survival Evolved, if you've ever heard of that game. But with yeah. Pokemon with guns. <laughs> and, yes, also guns. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The the guns are very real. So, uh, first off, uh, an interesting story revolving around Pal World was a mod that somebody made that literally made it Pokemon instead of Pal World. Mr. Uh, Toasted Shoes on Twitter had posted, uh, was going to be posting a full video, uh, but then a day later, he's like, uh, yeah, on his uh, Twitter X account, uh, yeah, Nintendo has come for me. Please leave me in your thoughts and prayers. And uh, in the image below on that tweet, it says, the media has been disabled in response to a report by the copyright owner. So, Nintendo, or Game Freak, or the Pokemon Company, or all three, uh, copyright claimed that video on Twitter X. Oh, yeah. Which, and to say the least, I think this is just the beginning of uh, what their plans are for Power World, depending on their findings. Yes, but, uh, which, uh, speaking of that, uh, Slade. They made it. They actually made a statement. Holy shit! The Pokemon Company made a statement on this. Yep. So I'll go ahead and read it out here. Yep. We have received many inquiries regarding another company's game released in January 2024. We have not granted any permission for the use of the Pokemon intellectual property or assets in that game. We intend to investigate and take appropriate measures to address any acts that infringe on intellectual property rights related to the Pokemon. We will continue to cherish and nurture each and every Pokemon and its world and work to bring the world together through Pokemon the future. Which, first so, off... Uh, I... PR speak for, we got a billion emails from 
all of our estranged fans who can't shut the fuck up. Okay, now, like, <laughs> I, 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 I disagree on that. About this. Uh, no, in terms of like it being the fans that emailed them. I bet they were they were probably getting a lot of emails, not from fans, probably from gaming media outlets, real media, like like outside of gaming media I'm outlets. Sure they got some, but I'm also I also believe fans also got in on this. Well, too. well, well, I. Now, maybe this might be coincidental, but, you know, we just talked about it. Maybe they became aware of Power World because of the takedown of the Pokemon mod. No, I think they're very well of Power World success. Yeah. It sold eight and a half million copies in a week, and I Good think that number God. is still going up. Like, unless they're living under a rock, which I know they aren't, they're also watching Power World with extreme interest. Yeah, so this so, was before they even made this statement. Uh, so, so, what are the two big controversies really surrounding Pal World? Obviously, one is potential thought of use of intellectual property stealing yeah, plagiarism. designs. Plagiarism, yeah, plagiarism, basically. Plagiarism's the big one that yeah. they might have some ground to go on based off, like, looking into the games and, the, like, the models and the files. But the other one is a bit of an accusation that yes. doesn't necessarily have any ground to stand on. It's not exactly proven true. But that is the use of AI. Yes. So I will actually get into that because I have a couple things here. So uh, some people have looked through uh, the CEO or uh, CEO or owner of uh, Pocket Pair, which is the company behind Pal World, uh, Mr. Uh, Takuro Mizobi. And he has a history of uh, being a crypto bro, uh, he has his own, I believe, his own crypto exchange, and uh, Pocket Pair have used AI uh, in a prior game of theirs called AI Art Imposter, which is uh, you, you you're given a you're given a prompt, uh, a prompt is given. Uh, each person has uh, generated artwork, so yes, it is a real time image generation game. So it does use generative AI. Uh, and uh, yeah, apparently uh, it has very terrible reviews on Steam. <laughs> yeah, so uh, long story short, the potential for AI is definitely there. But they've already released a yep. statement saying that they did not use AI yep. and whatnot in the game. And, and they also, you know... But there's no, like, actual proof to back up the claim, so... Yeah. This is all pure speculation on our part. We're yeah. not saying they definitively use AI. No, but, like, I get the people's concern based on, like, the tweets that people the have... track record. ...have found yeah. the track record. And a funny thing somebody found uh, from a long time ago interview on Wired Japan, uh, because this dude... Uh, let me get his name again. Uh, Mr. Takuro Mizobi uh, once went to a Nintendo event uh, around the era of the DS, and he had this to say, uh, quote, I've always loved Nintendo games, and that hasn't changed. I deeply respect them. However, when it comes to making Ninten games, Nintendo has a strong philosophy of creating new and unique games with high quality. And, that and this was questioned at the Nintendo Game Seminar. On the other hand, I have a deep-rooted desire for my work to be enjoyed by as many people as possible. And to that end, if there are good ideas in the world, I pick them up and I don't necessarily have to be particular about originality. I th I'm i thinking about it. I want to make it more casually, or rather, I want to make it more casually. I think it would be a good idea to create things in a way that just jumps on what is trendy, lol. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, and I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily shame that approach. I Not think, necessarily. Uh, however, you get after it, get after it personally. Like, um, like, some of the best games have taken like elements. You can take take elements of other great games and combine them, and the, and it has been successful. And clearly, Pal World, wh whatever you think of the actual game itself, because not everybody's gonna like a survival crafting game. That's not for yeah. everybody, but. Well, and then, like, look at it like this. That approach is not exactly unique. Oh. Um, that is a very popular approach amongst many indie developers, as well as people who make fan games or, like, ROM hacks and stuff oh, like and, that. Oh, and we're going to get into a fan not, game later. <laughs> we're going to get yeah, into one of those. That is not a it. unique approach no. to uh, making games. I think it is a very good approach in a lot of 
scenarios. And yeah. honestly, and I guess I'm going to get into my overall art, my overarching thoughts on Power World. Yeah. Um, I think Power World is a very good game for everything that it does. I I know it's like an early access title. We don't have yeah. like the full picture yet. Yeah. And Lord knows where this um we'll Nintendo go. slash Pokemon inquiry goes. Mm -hmm. But uh. I like Power World. I think they've done a pretty fantastic job just by pure concept alone. Yeah. Um, it's very fun. And honestly, let's say, hypothetically speaking, they did um, steal models from, like, Game Freak and, like, the Pokemon games. Mm -hmm. I honestly could care less. I know, like, we should take a moral stance on, like, plagiarism and it's, like, really bad and whatnot. What? But, like... Uh, Honestly, for the last, I want to say, 10 to 20, 15 years, I feel like Game Freak and the Pokemon Company have been creatively bankrupt. They haven't done anything to improve the formula. They're, uh, ever since the transition to 3D, they've, you know, continuously flopped again and again. Like, I feel like this, they need some form of competition, however we get it. Like, I, I guess I'm going to be the more neutral stance because I'm not really a Pokemon fan. I'm not. Like, I'm not the biggest survival crafting game fan. Uh, if there is legitimate proof that Pocket Pair stole intellectual property from Pokemon, they should absolutely be gotten after. Because you're stealing yeah, no, other absolutely. people's intellectual property. And the funny thing, I, I don't know if most people know this, Pocket Pair are a Japanese developer and developing yeah. team. So... It would basically just be like Japanese law, and probably Pokemon would win if they actually have proof. And I know some people were like, oh, why couldn't they look into it, like, earlier? Like, they probably didn't ha weren't able to get access to the files because the game wasn't out yet? <laughs> like... Yeah. And um, I'll say this. I mm -hmm. guess I clarify my thoughts a bit more. Yeah. Obviously, plagiarism is very bad, yes. and I do not condone it in any way, shape, or form. Yes. But... I'm also going to make a statement that I just do not feel sorry for Game Freak in the slightest. But, so I guess that's just my yeah. final uh, do, do you think anything happens out of this? I, I'm of the belief I either nothing happens or it's going to be a long time before anything happens. Considering yeah, I like, think we're talking like maybe a year or two before anything happens. Um, yeah, if, if they have I a substantial case to make, it'll take time. They, exactly, but... I don't know. I also think that they can make the argument that the game's legally distinct enough yeah. to, like, not exact be, like, safe in, like, courts and whatnot. Again, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a copyright lawmaker in, like, Japan or yeah. here in the yeah. States, for that matter. But, yeah. but I think um, there's a high likelihood that Powell's probably in the clear. Yeah, probably. Like, the, the AI stuff, I think, will still follow the game forever just because, like, what people have dug up on the on the history of the main CEO of Pocket Pair and, and the fact that they have released a generative AI game before. Like, it's not necessarily yeah. the greatest look in the world, but, like, if Pocket Pair doesn't have anything, or not Pocket Pair, if Pal World doesn't have anything like that, like, it's it's a surprising success. I will say that. And <laughs> potential TGA game of the year nominee. <laughs> that Maybe <laughs> would be the most insane plot twist ever. It could be, honestly. Like, I think their decision to chase arc gameplay mm -hmm. versus like the Pokemon loop that we have now is an interesting choice. I will it's say a, that. Yeah, it's a very interesting choice. I think it was actually kind of genius overall. Yeah, because it's something different. Like, nothing against any of the, like, Pokemon likes that are, like, great quality on Steam. I've heard, like, Coromon is probably, like, the best one of those types of, like, Pokemon-like gameplay style, like, games available right now. But mm -hmm. it is an interesting decision. They went... And, and the fact it's multiplayer as well. I think I think that's why it's been big, especially in like the streaming content creation space. Because you can play multiplayer. And you know, it's like Pokemon. So <laughs> But our final our final story of the week, a, a smaller one, but the most recent one, uh, was from uh the developer of Bloodborne PSX, Miss Lilith Walther. Uh, who was making Bloodborne Cart, which is 
the Bloodborne a demake uh, for those who remember that which was which set the internet on fire at the time because you know Sony stopped caring about Bloodborne <laughs> but uh, the future of Bloodborne card it was set to release in a couple of days but Sony has contacted Lilith and uh, yeah basically they need to scrub the branding off of Bloodborne card yeah so, yeah, the Sony, the Sony lawyers, <laughs> Sony lawyers got to her. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, there will be a short delay uh, to do this, uh, and it will have a release in the future. I don't have a release date yet, but we'll let the audience know ASAP. And apparently, they were honestly expecting something like this to happen, and the idea of having full creative control is kind of exciting. So, what are your thoughts on this, Slade? Oh, no. It kind of sucks because Sony hasn't acknowledged the Bloodborne series in like yeah. a decade. <laughs> well, so. Bloodborne is in a funny spot where it's like Sony and From both hold the rights. It's like what yeah. Mario RPG was was under. <laughs> funny enough. <laughs> yeah, so they come out with the transformative like fan game. Yeah, that's really interesting in concept, and they're just like, yeah, how about now? Yeah, like so. I, I think because this, I think Bloodborne. Uh, D make didn't get hit with this because it wasn't uh, gonna be a full game because the Bloodborne yeah. D make was a demo. But Lilith, at this point, I don't know. Like, since you have to rescrub your branding of Bloodborne cart, whatever you're gonna name it, honestly, sell it on Steam, sell it on GOG, sell it on Itchio. At this point, make some extra oh, yeah, bank absolutely. off of it. At the, at this point, so. But what a what a wild wild week. Besides the. There was another major story. We're not going to talk about it, but it, it, it was the second biggest story, probably uh, second or third biggest, depending on what you think of the layoffs, second or third biggest story of the week. But we're not touching that with a okay, 50 maybe, foot pole. Maybe, maybe the word's important. But yeah. The layoffs are obviously the most important thing. Oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Fair, fair. But yeah, we're not touching that. So if you know what it is, you know, but we're not touching yeah. it with a. 59 foot pole here on this channel <laughs> yeah uh i guess i'll just make a statement for everybody in the channel yeah so uh we're not going to cover youtuber controversies and stuff like that that's kind of not what we want to do on well our of, we're of, not of well of theaters well of the nature that this particular youtuber controversy was like based on yeah, like, obviously we'll cover it in regards to like how it pertains to video gaming news in general yeah but like Byron and I aren't trying to find views for, like, drama and, uh, in this case situation, like, <sighs> victims of, like, you know, sexual harassment, like, stuff like that. Yeah, so, um, that's... We want the best for all the victims, and we yeah. don't like drawing attention to, like... Yeah people who do those kinds of things yeah so. if, if you want to know the full story there's probably some other youtubers that have made great recaps on the, on the entire situation but yeah so long story short if you ever see like a like youtuber controversy there's a high likelihood unless it's like involving a youtuber in like a video game company or something we're just not going to or, cover it probably but uh but yeah thank you all for watching this watching or listening to this week's news episode this has been byron this has been slow. And we hope you all have a good day, good night, and goodbye.